Hi everyone, it's 1.15 in the morning, it's the 4th of April, so it's Thursday, and I've got a sore tongue. I bit it yesterday because I've been doing a lot of sorting with my Lego and I was using my teeth to separate some bricks, it was never a good idea. My teeth slipped and bit my tongue. So, yeah. Um, last Friday I picked up a, a reasonable sized job lot of Lego. In fact, that green tub there was full. Um, hence why I've been doing a lot of sorting. Um, but there's two big sets that came for. I paid 60 quid for the lot, right? Got it from Chroma, so I didn't have to go too far. One of the sets was this one here. Um, it wasn't assembled like this. It was half disassembled. Um, all the cab had been taken off and there was no wheels. And Some of the bits had actually been broken. This bit here was snapped. And there's a couple of other bits in this area snapped. These are actually wrong. They're supposed to be black, not grey. But I only found three, and two of those were snapped. <laughs> so, I'm guessing this got dropped on this side, and it got damaged, and someone started to take it apart, and then threw it to one side, couldn't be bothered with it. So I dismantled it, and uh, rebuilt it. And that took me six hours. Just to rebuild it, not to dismantle it. Um, because it came with its box and its instructions and I've looked on eBay and I found one for sale on there, the cheapest one for £85, buy it now. So I think if I want to be a little bit more, or well, to give a realistic estimate on its value I'm probably looking at about £70 for that, 78, 70 to £80. So it was worth the 60 quid buying all that Lego, that big tub and this just for this truck. That's actually one of the reasons, or the reason I bought it as well as I thought, well, there's a nice big tub of Lego there. Lots of parts, which it did provide. I've actually filled up a number of my tubs now and containers. But there's a couple of other small sets. There's a partial one there I've got to finish building. Um, it's pretty much how it was when I got it in the box. There's some Star Wars sets, but I'm not really in a Star Wars, so I've just dismantled those. But there's this thing as well. Managed to build this. There's a couple of parts missing that I had to replace. No figures. Oh yeah, as for that tow truck, I think there was only one, two pieces that I can think of that I had to replace, and that was the string and the missing bit for that window frame. Um, as well as substitute it in grey because I haven't got black parts at the minute. Uh, and aside from replacing a handful of broken parts, that was pretty much complete. This had a few items missing. Whoops. Mainly just niggly things like these little um, crowbars and mainly the, the um, accessories for the minifigures like the radios and the loud hailer thing there, the wand and whatnot. That's all what was missing, as well as the figures. I'm not fussed about the figures, to be honest. I've got plenty of police figures. I know I've got over a hundred Lego police figures. This camera has a serious mood on tonight. I've been trying to record this vlog and all it does is keep shutting down. Anyway, so yeah, nice police station here. If I want to complete it, I will uh, get some figures, but I want to modify it anyway, so I'm not that fast. Um, so, Saturday, just gone, this was Friday, just gone, I got this the, the uh, 29th of March. Saturday, I uh, went to a car boot. Got some more Lego in a, slight, in a smaller tub. Um, which I had tipped out on this worktop, but um, I've scooped it all into a tub. So I've still got 
I sorted out what was in here. This is just other stuff that I've got kicking around that needed sorting. Because I didn't want like three or four tubs of Lego that needed sorting. So I just chucked it into one tub. Um, but yeah, this was about this full when I got it. Uh, and that cost me £10. And there's a few figures in there and a few other bits and bobs. And I've just, like I said, I sorted all that out and then just threw this lot in on top of it from another container that needs sorting. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? I'll check. I'll go back in the kitchen. Um, I've got a couple of these space sets. I'm actually wishing I got the uh, um, uh, the medieval set he had. There was a big castle theme in the 1980s that Lego had going, and I would like to collect a few of those. But never mind. And I got that set as well. That was um, almost Saturday's haul from the card boot. I was trying to remember what else I got. Um, it's all dotted around the place. Oh, I got this lamp stand as well. Which I need to do some work on. I need a light switch because... There's a switch, one switch on each of these. It wasn't a double switch like I've got on that one. I think this is actually older than that one. Or it's just a different design, I'm not sure. But um, when I first got it, it worked, but the bulbs were flickering quite badly. Um, so I tried all the connections, screwed them all down, opened the switches up, screwed all the terminals down. They still flickered. And then I noticed when I tapped on the switches, they would stop flickering, or at least this one would stop flickering. That one would, and then start again. So I then suspected the switch contacts. Um, so to confirm the switch, I took it all apart. As you can see, I took all the, the switches off. There was just one plug. I'll show you the bit um, in a minute. So I just stuck a plug straight to the, the lamp holder, plugged it in, no flicker. So that confirmed the switches. So what I'm going to do... I only want one switch on it for what I'm going to be using it for. You see, what they did came into this um, straight through connector there, which is made by EverReady. It's quite an old one. Um, so I'm actually thinking someone wired this up like this. Well, it didn't actually come from the factory like it, but anyway. So the plug was on that end. So it came into this, it split. So obviously that's big enough for two of these cables, and then you had a switch on each one, which meant the switches are down there somewhere on the bloody floor, which I don't want. So what I'm going to do, I've got a better connector somewhere there. I'm probably going to use this one. Put that up here. So I'll run these two cables into that. I'll then run a single one out of there, just a short length. I've got plenty here for that. To a new switch, I'll go out and buy a new switch and um, then go from the switch, make um, a decent length cable. I don't need a great big long one, I just basically put the plug on the end of it and plug it in. So both lamps will be on one switch because, like I said, I don't need them on separate switches. Uh, so, yeah, that's the plan. This is quite old as well because it's got Made in England on it. <laughs> that's how you can tell if things are old these days when it's made in your own country you know it's old or well, at least here in Britain because I don't think they're well there's very little manufactured in this country in these days so I bought this that's four pounds um, I think it was worth it even if it did have a couple of dodgy light switches on it but I just want to use it alongside that one when I'm filming on the kitchen worktop, so I've got some light either side of me just to reduce shadowing and whatnot. Um, and it'll help me see better when I'm working on things as well, so that's why I got that one. That, if you look, I don't know if you can see on camera, but that one is a smidge taller. I say a smidge taller, it's about an inch and a half, two inches taller. But the height doesn't really matter, I'm not really fussed about the height. Uh, what else? On Saturday's car boot, I also got that thing, which is a big pile of shit, basically. Ugh. The um, windy cable is down there. 
which is um, not very springy anymore. Not like that one on that beacon, which I got Sunday. I'll come to that in a minute. This one, although it does turn on, does work, you know, does spin round and round like it should. The reflector doesn't reflect the light. The reflector is about as much use as a chocolate fire guard. But this looks like it is just a cheap jobby thing anyway. It doesn't even have a halogen bulb. Look, it's just got an ordinary 21 watt bulb in it. What you would get in um, indicators on cars and fog lights. Um, that's all it is. And the orange has actually faded on the top here. So I'm guessing this has been in the sunlight for some time. And the fact the lens has done that tells me it's a cheap, shitty thing anyway. So it's just going to be a... I've just done that and all that metal stuff in there is going to be stuck to the bottom now, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> well, that was a smart friggin' thing to do, wasn't it? Oh, well. Oh. Yeah, so that's just a random beacon just for my little collection. Uh, also on Saturday, I've got a bunch of cars. Some of these I bought from a couple of separate stalls. But there's a majority of these... Uh, that was just in a box. Actually, I think I can show you. I've got that one from a separate stall. That one, because I've never seen one like that. That's in relatively good condition. Uh, that one. That one. That one. That one. And that one. And I think that corgi, I can't remember. As I can't remember, I'm going to chuck it in that pile. This lot was in a box that I bought for £5. I was just looking at a store and I started to rummage through the box. Well, I say rummage, just look at what vehicles were there. And you know, I have to say, you know, these old lorries caught my, caught my eye, not my mind. And the BP one. And uh, the guy just said, if you want the box, it's a fiver, so I thought, oh well, I'll take the box. I'll just sort it out when I get home, so I did. I've got this little old Tonka in there, look at that. Old Tonka. Uh, but while we're on the subject of cars, just before I get into Sunday's car boot, I actually watch an Australian guy who um, restores old Matchbox cars, particularly the ones from the... Um, 60s, so with that style wheel on, and um, about two weeks ago he started a two week vacation here in England, didn't think anything of it, you know, just thought, oh, he's coming over here to London or somewhere nice, you know, as it's a vacation, didn't know until he put a video up today, that um, he actually visited a friend here in North Walsham. He actually came here. <laughs> you, you just don't expect it, do you? Um, but yeah, he's got a, a long-time friend here that he visited who gave him some cars. And I've got this feeling... I know him. <laughs> um, I don't know. He only gave the guy's first name out on the video, but, you know, and there's probably more than one guy by that name in this town, but I've just got this inkling that I know him. Um, so I didn't want to ask in the comments, you know, for the guy's full name. So I actually asked if um, this guy was retired from a profession. Because if he is retired from this particular profession, then I know it's the same guy. <laughs> Which is going to be even more weird. But um, I wish I'd known he was coming to this area. Because, well, I've got a bunch of vehicles that I could have sorted. I've got a big box of them down there. I'm sure I could have sorted him a few out to uh, take home and restore. In fact, I'd have probably given him the box and just said, take your pick. If you can find something in there that you want to take home and do, take them home. I'm pretty certain I've already got one of these, so... That would be a duplicate for 
selling for a restoration or something. Uh, I do want the cattle truck though. It's a dodge. So, going back to the car boots. Oh no, I've got one more item from Saturday's car boot. And that is that power supply. Now what it is, I'm going to pick it up actually. Bring it here. Just to zoom back out. Now what it is, it's mains powered. That's the mains lead that plugs into 230 volt mains. It's got four 1.5 volt outputs. See, it's got 1.5 written on it. Positive, and if you look, this looks like a little battery because you've got the little positive dimple there and the flat bit there. So the idea with this is, you've got the on-off button. Um, you can basically power anything from, you know, 1.5 volts up to 6 volts. Because obviously four of these is 6 volts. And the way you would do that, if I want like 3 volts, for example, I would just link these two terminals together. And then that would be my negative, that would be my positive, and I've got a 3 volt supply. So if I was, I don't know, testing a battery operated toy or something that was only 3 volts, I've got a supply there without having to mess around trying to find some batteries. You know? And of course if I wanted uh, 4.5 volts, for example, I would link these two, and these two, and then that would be my positive and that would be my negative. Then you'd have three of these connected and Bob's your uncle, four and a half volts. Although I believe it was this one that was actually showing six volts on my digital meter over there. For some odd reason, I'm not sure why. Oh, we're still zoomed in a little bit. I thought I'd zoomed all the way out. There's a little LED on it. Now that one's probably not lighting up because it's disappeared. And this one that's kicking out six volts. Um wasn't lighting up either. That one wasn't, that one was. That one obviously wasn't because, like I said, the LED has actually fell through. What I'm going to do is I want to get into this, and it looks like the way I do it. I've got to undo this top, but it's got a security nut on there. There's nothing major. I can get that open with a pair of pliers or something. I just want to have a look and see what makes it tick. There must be a transformer in there because there's quite a bit of weight in this. It's made by a company called TTS, has the address and the phone number. Educating and inspiring. I don't think this is actually that old because it's got, you know, the clear lensed LEDs on it. They're not coloured red, although they light up red. But yeah, I got it because I thought, I don't always have batteries at hand. And if I got this, I can test battery devices without having a hunt around for the bloody batteries. So that was worth £7 in my opinion. Okay, what are we up to? Sunday's car boot. Well there was that. It's a Brecon Beacon. Um, didn't come with a cigarette lighter plug on it, it just came with the wires. But it does work and it has actually a um, suction cup. You see that handle? You lift that handle up and lock it down onto that little tab there and it has a hell of a lot of suction power. You won't get that off. I've tried. In fact, I actually got it stuck to Mum's worktop. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I couldn't get it off. Even when I released it, that didn't want to come off. So... I just turned the wrong switch on. I thought I'd broken something. But yeah. That's actually pretty bright. You see, with the other one I just showed you, which I paid £3 for, I can't believe I only paid £1 for that, um, you don't get that bright flash from the reflector. Because that reflector is just totally crap. But that's actually quite quiet. It's probably become my favourite beacon so far in my collection. But I have many beacons. I've actually got four, just single beacons like that. Well, that one... I've got the magnetic one, which no longer has a cigarette plug on it either because it broke. And I've got that little strobe, and I've got my LED one somewhere. That keeps vanishing for some reason. 
that keeps hiding up. I think it's under the bed. I think that's where that's rolled off to. But I have to say, I actually prefer that one over my LED beacon. The LED beacon is good, it's nice and bright. But I don't know, I just like the old school rotating lights for some reason. <clears throat> but uh, the best thing with that, with the suction cup, is it doesn't have to be on a metal surface, it can be on a non metal surface. As long as it's flat, it should stick to it fine. Uh, right, what else? Done the Lego. A few more items from Sunday Car Boot. Where is it? There it is. Got this little multimeter. Needs repair work, but I only paid one pound for it. Um, the batteries had been taken out, but whoever took the batteries out did it too late because uh, all the contacts had uh, started to corrode and a lot of them, or three of them, had broken. One came away from the circuit board and the other two had snapped off. The spring bits had snapped off, so... Nothing on the circuit board or damaged anything, so... If I can repair the contacts, I can um, make that work again. Although it's not necessary, because I only got it really as a display piece. You know... Because I do like my retro stuff up in this corner. I need better shelving, really. Trying to thin out my computers as well. Um, but anyway, oh, came with the box as well, surprisingly. I'm sure there was something else I bought from the same guy, and I can't... Well, no, it may not have been him, actually. Um, but I actually spent £15 in total at this car boot on Sunday. Spent more... To, uh, sm blah, try that again. Spent more on Saturdays... Um, this was probably my favourite Sunday buy. This was actually £10. If you're wondering what this is, if you don't recognise it, and you're probably thinking it's just a torch, it isn't. Well, in theory it is a torch, but it can be a torch plus a signal light. Um, I'm going to put you down in a minute so I can show you the battery. So, what it is, it's a Bardic lamp. And these were used by British Rail back in the day. Um, the guard had them, the train guard, the guardsman. So, you could use it as a torch. But, it's also got three colour lenses that rotate, hence why, if I just turn it off for a minute, you've got this cutout. Because, if I rotate the knob on top, when I want to, there we go, we'll go the other way then. So you've got these coloured lenses, so we've got green and if I rotate it again if it's going to let me we've got amber and if I rotate it once more we've got red and then back to white again or you could have half and half <laughs> oh that button is a bit stiff I think I need a bit of a lube uh, yeah the seller said it did work and I had the battery with it but I didn't expect the battery to work because they don't make the batteries for these anymore. Batteries are obsolete. Um, this can be a pain to get into it, so just bear with me. One of these um, springs is a bit stiff as well. I might have to put some WD on it. But that's the battery it has. A big 4.5 volt battery. It's actually got three cells in it that are the length of this, so it's got one, two, three. There's one of these batteries on eBay for £15, and that's the only one on there. Um, but I looked at the expiry date on this battery, and it's got 2013, which surprised me um, because I didn't think they still made the batteries, you know, that recently. I thought they'd gone out of production a lot further back than that, but no. Obviously not. But, uh, yeah, the guardsmen would have used this. They could have, if they needed a red light on the back of the train, they could just flick that to red, stick it on the back. Or if they needed a red signal, because the one on the track had failed, they, you know, had one here. 
So this is all metal, it's all a metal body. It's actually cast aluminium. Nice rubber seal around there. I'm actually tempted to perhaps buy another one on eBay because they're not actually that much. Um, I mean, this one cost me £10, but it was working. It's all in working order. Even if the paint is flaking and whatnot, but it's still in pretty good condition. So I'm going to leave this one as it is because I think um, it's... Even though it's fairly old, it's showing some nice patina, you know. It's not... It's not showing desperate need of some restoration, so I'm going to leave that one. But I wouldn't mind another one. I actually have to say, when I saw these on eBay, I actually thought they were bigger than this. I really did thought they were bigger. Um, oh great, now I've got heartburn. Yeah, but it seems like the £10 was actually a reasonable price for that, if a little bit cheap. But then again, I was just looking at Bart Nows and some sellers had Bart Nows of £20 on theirs. I admit, they looked in better condition than this one. Um, so yeah, I actually, when I looked up the prices and whatnot, I actually feel I did pay, pay a fair price for that. I've wanted one for years. Because every time I look for road lamps on eBay and barricade lamps on eBay, I often search railway lamp and these will come up. And I just, you know, for years I kept thinking I'll buy one one day, I'll buy myself one one day. And uh, this, I just happened to catch a glimpse of it in the top of a box of stuff on this bloke's stall. And as soon as I saw it, I thought, I've got to have it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> gotta have it. Just sometimes what I do, I listen to the seller talking to other potential customers so I can get an idea of what his pricing is like. <laughs> um, and um, he was pricing things quite fairly, actually, so that's why I asked about that. But if I find a seller is you know, giving people ridiculous prices and I won't bother asking them, I'll actually walk away. <laughs> but going back to beacons, I could have had a nice long Britax light bar, but one, I wouldn't have been able to get it in the car, because there's me, mum, my stepdad and brother, and two, I haven't got anywhere to put it here anyway. Otherwise, I would have loved a great big light bar like that up on my shelf. <laughs> um, I'd have preferred an old one. This was quite a modern one with rotator lights. Um, I'd have preferred an older one than that if I was going to have one. Would have been great on the top of a recovery truck. In fact, looking at the length, I would have said it was for a lorry. So it's probably 24 volt. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, I had fun for the last uh, few days. Did well for Lego. Really well, actually, for, you know, used Lego. I actually like buying tubs like that. I've just assorted Lego, loose Lego, because I like digging around, I like the surprise or the feeling of not knowing what you're actually going to get in that tub. Because um, a lot of the time I do find some real neat finds in there, and some real neat parts, like, you know, I found a whole police station in this one <laughs> that I didn't know was there. I didn't even know what the instructions were because I didn't study the photos that much, or at least not the um, ones with the instructions in. So it weren't until I picked it up and actually looked at the instructions, I was like, ooh, I've got Well, at least two of the books there for the police station. I didn't have the ones for the two cars. I had to uh, download the PDF from Lego for that. Yes, you can actually download instructions if you lose them. Or if you don't want to keep the physical instructions like I do, you can just download them and um, keep a digital copy.
But uh, I don't know when I'll sort this box out, but this week, you know, spending like two days pretty much sorting out Lego, I've had enough for the time being. Um, few things in here like some grey bricks and things I might get out of here. Oh dear. Yeah. Right. I'm going to talk about something that I rarely, rarely talk about on this channel. Um, and that's a political thing. As you all know, Brexit is a big thing here in Britain at the moment. And to be honest, I'm getting really sick and tired of hearing about it. It's every day, every day in the media, on Facebook, you know, friends are posting about it and it's in the news. It's just driving me absolutely bomb and it has done for months. You know, I'm at the point where I just want us to leave. Just leave. <laughs> but I will say, I am a Remainer. I wanted to remain in the EU. But, my way of thinking has always been, a vote is a vote, you know. I wanted to remain. A majority of the UK disagreed and wanted to leave. That's how the vote went. That's what we should do. We should leave. But, you know, that vote was two years ago. Why has it taken, well, it hasn't actually taken two years because they haven't actually come to any agreement, have they? But in two years, why haven't they come to an agreement? Why did Theresa May leave it to the last couple of months to write up a deal? She had two years to write a frickin' deal. And she leaves it to the last few months to write up a deal. And now, Parliament doesn't like it. They keep rejecting, you know, her deal. Even with changes that she's made and whatnot. <clears throat> so. And now she's in talks, for a change with Jeremy Corbyn, you know, they're not at each other's throats. For some reason, they're always at each other's throats, them two. Which, to me, should have been done ages ago as well, and everyone's agreed, who I've spoken to about it, it should have been done ages ago. Not this last-minute thing, you know, not this, oh, shit, I've gone and pissed this up, I need help. You know, <laughs> I'm going to talk to my arch-enemy, Jeremy Corbyn. Oh. At the moment, I will say, I don't like any of our political parties. Not one of them. I used to be a Labour supporter. I don't even like them at the minute either. Because as far as I'm concerned, they're all responsible for this mess, basically. It's all Brexit is. It's a mess. <clears throat> because... None of them. I feel the other parties could have, you know, pushed May into getting a deal sorted a lot earlier than she did. I just, I don't think any of them have done enough to get this sorted. I don't know if it's because our government, despite our vote, they wanted to um, remain. And they're just being as awkward as possible. I'm, I'm really not sure. But like I said. Even though I'm a Remainer. We voted leave. We should leave. <laughs> that is that is what a majority of the country wanted. And that should be respected. I'm not one of these Remainers. You know. That have been moaning about it. Or. You know. Wanted to go on these protests about it. And what not. I haven't signed any petitions to revoke it or anything. <clears throat> Actually, I did that last one. That got like six million signatures. But that's because I knew damn well the government wouldn't do anything about it anyway. <laughs> I just signed it for the sheer hell of it. But aside from that, you know, I've, I've not been against the idea of leaving. 
like I said, that's what was voted. I'm exactly the same when I admin on groups. Sometimes, us admins, we have a vote on certain things, whether to keep a post or get rid of it. And if I voted to keep it, and say another colleague voted to keep it, but then four of our other colleagues voted to get rid of it, we get rid of it. Doesn't matter if I agree with it or not, that's just how the vote went, that's what we do. I don't argue, I don't get pissy. I might feel a bit upset, you know, <laughs> but I don't throw me rattle out on the pram because of it. The vote is the vote. Regardless, you know, of how big or small the vote is, or whatever you're voting for, the, the outcome should always be respected. <clears throat> anyway, ran over. Just leave the frickin' EU and be done with it, because I'm sick and tired of hearing it. <laughs> I just want to put earplugs in. <laughs> I really do. Anyway. Is there anything else I want to talk about? Still no sign of Nemo. Nearly two weeks. I'll be two weeks this Friday. Um, a friend of mine. Um, he came up yesterday. Because he was after a spare mountain bike. And I actually had one that I wanted to sell for 30 quid. Um, and he was interested in it. And he had another bike there that needs a lot of work and he pinched parts off of it to keep his other one going. So I sort of thought about it and I thought, mm, I'll do a part exchange with him if he's interested. So I said, well, if you give me 20 quid and your old broken mountain bike, you can take this one if you want it. So that's what we did. So I've got another bike to work on. Keep me preoccupied tomorrow. Um, but he very kindly printed some um, lost posters. So I'm going to go and put these up tomorrow before I head to Mum's. Um, I do need to whiz to the store, possibly QDs, just to get a tin of pins because I don't have any. I've actually ran out. I thought I had loads in this, but I've actually got three, four actually. I couldn't count this morning, obviously, because there's four in there. <laughs> oh well, not the first time I haven't been able to count. I did fail math at school, after all. Not kidding, I got an F in maths. <laughs> I've just, I've always been crap at maths. I, I find it hard to explain. When I get asked a maths question, my brain just freezes. It's almost like it just doesn't do anything. It doesn't do no processing. It doesn't do no thinking. <laughs> it's like it's allergic to maths questions, regardless of how easy it is. And a lot of the time, even for easy things, I have to use my fingers. I'm like... <laughs> oh, I hate it. I hate math. I hate math because my brain hates math. But then again, the way I've seen it, you know... Other people are good at maths, but crap at English. You know, my stepdad, he's actually um, dyslexic. He can do maths just like that. You ask him a maths question, he can sort of, you know, figure it out in his head. Whereas because of his dyslexia, he struggles with reading and writing. Me and mum are the other way around. I wouldn't say I've got good English and grammar and spelling, but I think I've got adequate enough. Most of... What I mess up when I'm typing is just a typo. Um, but we can't do maths. N neither me or mum can do maths. We hate it. We have to use a calculator, you know. <laughs> right. I'll get my fish tank done. My stepdad's been so busy lately, he hasn't had time to fart, so we haven't had time to... We haven't even had time to clear up the workshop, let alone make a stand for this. That's why one of the reasons I've got this on hold, because I want to get the stand in before... Well, I have to get it on its stand before I, um, you know, prepare it and fill it up and whatnot, because obviously I've got to move it to the new stand. 
That was the other thing that I got from Sally's car boot that I forgot about. You may have noticed the police station is sitting on a cardboard box in here. Well, I went past the stall and the stall had an open box of these. Some had already been sold. I think there was two left in the box. There was only six. 50p each, so I thought, oh, well, you know, 50p each. The expiry is 2012, but I thought, well, sometimes they work, you know. These were brand new. These were still sealed. It still had the plastic cap on there. So I thought, you know, I'll get a couple, and if they work, great. If they don't, no big loss at 50p each. Um, you know, actually, fun fact. I opened the two up here that I bought separately. One worked, one didn't. <laughs> That's the working one. Um, but I actually went back. Because I remember him saying he had a you know, box full. He'd opened up another one where two had disappeared. So I just said, you know, how much do you want for the whole box? And he said, five pounds. So I was like, that'll do. <laughs> so I took the whole box. There's 23 batteries in here. <laughs> Sealed and new. With the same expiry date, see? But I've actually found out that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Because this works. And the one in my Bardic lab works, and that's got an expiry date on it of, um, what was it, 2013. So, <laughs> I've had all sorts of batteries that work well past their um, expiry date. So, it doesn't necessarily mean anything. It's always, always a good idea just to check it. If it works, great. If it doesn't, bin it. Oh, pardon me. See, it's a box of 24. Jesus Christ. <sighs> Nearly two o'clock in, in the morning and my neighbour has just slammed his door. <laughs> it just make me jump. <laughs> I know why he does it. I forgot to turn the kitchen light off. Dumbass. He does it to try and piss off the neighbour right below me. <laughs> Don't bother me because I'm usually awake at this time anyway. But it makes me jump every time, because I don't hear him come up the stairs. I just hear the bang. Oops. Well, if the slamming door didn't piss my neighbour off below me, me dropping that drill on the floor will. <laughs> that wasn't deliberate either, because I just knocked into this green tub. Hey, so quite a long vlog really, isn't it? Quite a lot to talk about though, because I did quite a, quite a lot of things over the last few days. Plan for tomorrow is to get up, go down to Mum's. We've got some fence panels to replace the ones at the front between the neighbour's garden, Mum's garden, because I'm surprised it's still standing actually. Um, because of all the high winds we've had. In fact, I think the only thing holding it upright is the. Um, bush that's attached to it. <clears throat> if it weren't for that bush I don't think that fence would still be standing. So we've got some fence panels to sort that but they've got to be cut down. So we're going to do that tomorrow and I think the plan is to put them up Friday. But tomorrow once we're done cutting them because it's not going to take me a step that long to cut three panels down to size I think. Um, I'm going to work on that mountain bike and see if I can get that up for sale by tomorrow afternoon. Shouldn't take me too long. I've got to change the front forks because one of the pegs that the V-brakes bolt to has actually snapped off. I think that's why he started salvaging some bits from it for his other bike. I want to play some Grand Theft Auto for an hour before I go to bed, so I'm just going to go into director's mode. The only reason I go in director's mode is because I can activate a few cheats and just randomly, you know, blow things up, drive around, kill people. <laughs> without the cops. I actually find with the wanted level on you get the cops on you too easily. 
especially in direct mode, you do the stupidest little thing and before you know it you've got three stars on to you. Right, I think I might need to get a new battery for this camera because it's really not holding its charge like it used to. Uh, let's put explosive bullets on. Let's put super jump on. I forgot it last time. Let's put invincibility on. There we go. Right, so I'm going to shut the camera off here. I've no doubt I've forgotten something, but I can talk about that in the next vlog. So, thanks a lot for watching if you made it this far, and uh, I'll talk to you all again in the next video. Bye.